Hello everyone, this is Wilson. Today I'm going to talk about this limit problem with two square roots. Yes, two square roots in there. So there are two radicals that you need to worry about in this problem. So how do we deal with this kind of problem? Usually before we actually get started, we are going to just plug in the five into the x's and then try this direct substitution and see what happens, right? So let's don't worry about anything, right? We are just going to start by plugging in the number. Okay, so we are going to start with the square root and then I change the x, right, into a blank so that I can plug in the five in there. So I'm just going to write down the form for the function. And so now if we plug the five into the x's, and so I'm going to fill in both blanks with the number five. Okay, so we directly substitute the five in there. And do you see what's going on here? If we do the calculation here, square root of five plus four, so that's square root of nine, right? Minus three in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we are getting what? Square root of four minus two. And so as you can see here, we are getting three minus three in the numerator and then two minus two in the denominator. So we are still getting zero over zero for this problem. Okay, so that's uh, an indeterminate form. So we cannot really draw any conclusion from this. And so now let's go back to the problem and think about how to do this problem. And so if you have seen my other videos, then you actually see that uh, whenever we encounter this kind of problems with a square root adding or subtracting another term, because that's there are two terms, right? So what we can do is to multiply by the conjugate of that expression. But now the problem is there are two of them. So what do we do? And if there are two of them, then we can still use the same idea, right? What do we do? We just do it twice, okay? So we use that same technique twice and see what's going on. So let's try that here. So we are going to start the problem by multiplying the top and the bottom by the conjugate of um, either the top or the bottom. It's up to you. It doesn't matter which one that you do at first, right? So either way is going to be fine. So let's just try to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator first. And so we are having um, the square root of x plus 4 and then minus three. And now what I'm going to do is to multiply that by the square root of x plus four. Now the conjugate is that for this expression is that we are changing the sign, right? From the minus to a plus. Okay, so we have that. And then you may say, what about the denominator? We'll just leave it for now. So we'll just copy the denominator for now. So we have um, x minus one and then minus two. And then just one thing that's really important, if you multiply something at the top other than one, then you need to multiply by the same thing so that you're not changing the problem. So we need to make sure that we multiply that. Okay, that that's, Views that it's going to get really messy, right? But then it will be okay. Okay, so now we are going to multiply the numerator together, right? So we are going to expand this. And this is actually um, an expression multiplying by its conjugate. That's actually the what the difference of two squares. So if you recall the formula right here, it's when you have a minus b times a plus b then what are you going to be getting? We are going to be getting a square minus b square. So it's basically the first turn square minus the second turn square. Now, if we look at this expression right here, if you square the first turn, then we are going to be getting x plus four, just x plus four. And then now you got to square the second turn. So if you square the second turn right here, that's what, that's a, nine, right? So you're going to get nine right here. And then don't forget that you got to subtract them, right? Because that's called a difference, which means subtraction, difference of two squares. So we got to subtract them. So we put the minus sign right here. And then now denominator. For the denominator, we actually do not really need to multiply it out. So just leave it as it is. Okay, so we have the square root of x minus one, 
then minus two, so just copy. Okay, so now we have this expression. Now what do we do? We just need to clean up the expression at the top, right? So if we are to clean up the expression at the top, then we are going to be getting x minus five. Okay, as you can see here, that's four minus nine, right? So we get x minus five. And then in the denominator, we are still getting the same stuff. So just copy it one more time. Okay, now, um, it feels like we, it's, that's not getting us anywhere. Remember that we actually did the direct substitution with this expression right here. When we substituted the five for the denominator, it's approaching zero. And now, as you can see here, the numerator change from the original expression to this x minus five, but that's not really helping because x minus five, as five approaches five, it's still approaching zero. So we are still getting an indeterminate form of zeros over zero. We are not getting anywhere. So what can we do right now? And as I mentioned before, because there are two expressions involving the radical, we got to use this strategy twice. We got to use this technique twice to, um, to clear the radicals. What that means is that we only did it for the numerator, but we haven't done this multiplying by the conjugate for the denominator. So we got to do it for the denominator right now. So in the next step, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of this original denominator, this square root of x minus one and then minus two. Okay, so let's do that. So if we are doing that here, Then we are going to be multiplying. Okay, so let's look at the bottom right here. It's the denominator is the, the square root of x minus one and then minus two, right? And we are going to multiply by its conjugate. So we have the square root of x minus one and then plus two. And then you may say, what about this factor right here, this square root of x plus four plus three? We didn't touch it, right? So we're just going to copy it right here. And so I just put it right after. And then you may say, why do I put that green expression right here? It's really because it makes it easy for us to multiply them, right? So that's why we are doing that. And now what about the numerator? And numerator, it's still just the x minus 5. But then this time, you actually need to do what? You actually need to multiply by this green expression so that you're not changing the problem, right? So we have the x minus 5. Don't forget to put parentheses, even though that pair of parentheses are not originally there. And so we are going to multiply, right, by this green expression. So x minus 1 and then plus 2. Okay, yeah, so it looks like the problem is getting worse, but it, it's actually getting better. You will see why in the next step. So let's do the next step right here. For this next step right here, what happens is that we are going to use that same formula again. We are, we are going to be getting the square of the first turn, square of the second turn, and then we subtract them. Okay, so if we do that, then we are going to be getting square the first term, which is just x minus one, okay, just x minus one. And then square the second term, that's uh, what, that's a four. And then you get to subtract them. So it will be x minus one minus four. And then we put that inside parentheses. When you multiply those two, that's what's getting you, okay? So I think it's a good idea to just highlight it right here so that see where that comes from. So if we multiply those two factors, then we are getting this expression right here. And then of course, we didn't touch this factor, right? So just copy. So just copy. Now, let me say, what about the uh, numerator? Just copy the numerator. Should we expand the numerator? No, don't do that, right? Don't do that. It's actually important that we do not do it. Oh, 
Okay, now good things had already happened. What is that? What is the good thing right here? Do you see that? There was the x minus 1 minus 4, which is just x minus 5. Okay, so this is actually just x minus 5. And you can see that in the numerator, there is also a factor of x minus 5. And so what we can do right now is to just cancel the x minus 5, right? Because x is approaching 5 and x minus 5 is approaching 0. It's really those two factors that are causing the 0 over 0 form so that we cannot really determine the limit. But right now we can cancel them. So if we cancel them, then they're not there anymore. Right, so we are going to just cross out this expression right here. Now we are left with a new expression with just those things, right? So I'm just going to write it down right now. So that's nice. It's really because we do not have an indeterminate form anymore. You will see by the time that you substitute the five in there, even though the problem is still involving two radicals in there. It feels like it's not getting us anywhere, but we can already find this limit without problem. Okay, so now what are we doing? We just substitute the 5 into the x, and then we're finished with the problem. So let's do that. So we substitute, which is the square root of x minus 1, right? Change the x into a blank, and then minus 2. And then in the denominator, we just copy that expression with the x change into a blank also. So we have the square root of x plus 4 and then plus 3. Okay, so now what do we plug in there? We are going to plug in, we are going to be plugging in the 5 in there, right? So just plug in the 5. And so now doing the calculation, what are we getting here? Um, 5 minus 1 is square root of well, 5 minus 1 is 4, so square root of 4, right? And then plus 2. Denominator. 5 plus 4 is square root of 9 here, right? 5 plus 4 is 9, so square root of 9 plus 3. So continuing with the calculation, we get 2 plus 2 over... Over what? Over uh, 3 plus 3. Okay, and then now we get 4 over 6, and then reducing the fraction, we get 2 over 3, so we are finished with the problem. And so this problem is, even though it's a lot of work, but it's not really that difficult. As you can see here, because we have two radicals and we are getting an indeterminate form, so usually the idea is that we are going to do it twice. The first time we did it here, uh, that's the conjugate of the numerator, but the second time that we did it, it's the conjugate of the original denominator, and then we can remove the factors that are causing the indeterminate form so that we can get the answer. Is that okay? So that's not too bad, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you like my video, please check out my other videos, and also please subscribe my channel. Give me a like and then leave me some comments and also please tell me if you would like me to do an example on something right so tell me a topic in the comments i would thank you for watching this video and see you next time